to Raising Graceful Children. I'm your host, Brett Glover. You know, I hate misplacing stuff. It's one of my pet bugs in life, is misplacing different things. This morning I went to my sock drawer, and I opened up my sock drawer, and I couldn't find one pair that matched. There was about 50 socks in there, but they were all different. And it always bugs me, what happens to that other sock? I know when I go to do my washing, I put it in the washing machine, uh, hit, the, hit the button, bang. Out comes one sock. Now I'm sure I didn't hit the Bermuda Triangle cycle on that, that washing machine. I'm sure that didn't happen, but every time one sock comes out. I hate it. I hate misplacing stuff. I hate misplacing my car keys. I hate misplacing my sunglasses. It, it's, it's a bug. It's a bugbear. It's something I, that really annoys me. The other day, I went looking for these pair of sunglasses. I looked everywhere, looked up and down, went everywhere. I eventually found them, but I, I went to these most unusual places. And I know strange things happen when you misplace stuff. You go looking in places that you never thought you'd look before. You go to places like the refrigerator, a jacket you haven't worn for five years. All these weird behaviours start to come into play. Did I leave my sunglasses in the refrigerator? Of course I must have left them in the refrigerator. Go figure. Well, you look in all sorts of different places. I know that you th sometimes you think you left them in a certain spot. You go back to that spot over and over and over again, probably 50 times over, looking for, the, for those sunglasses, but to no avail. You know, that's the definition of insanity, to do the same thing over and over again and expect a different result. It's the same thing when we're searching for stuff, they just disappear. Now, I know with these sunglasses, I eventually found them, of course. I'd given up. Couldn't find them anywhere. Until I walked into the bathroom and there they were, sitting on top of my head. I was walking around everywhere looking for them and they were already on me. Misplacing stuff. Boy, is that a bugbear. You know... I went on a fishing trip not so long back with a friend of mine. He hadn't travelled with me in this new car I bought. I bought a four-wheel drive and we got this, this boat that I used to tra travel up the beach with. And we drive up, drive up the beach and, uh, and tow the trailer along the beach with the four-wheel drive. This is in Australia. We're about a 40-mile beach and we'd head up to this fishing spot. Now, the, the boat was connected up with the trailer and everything was fine and we were, we were as a about four o'clock in the morning, we'd left really early for this trip to go out and go fishing. So we head up the beach to find our right fishing spot. And as we were travelling up the beach, we were talking, having a good time, everything was going well. And he was saying, gee, Brett, this is Phil saying, Brett, I think your car's pretty darn good. It's, you know, I'm very impressed. And he said, I was thinking, yeah, mate, yeah, I think it's a good car too. I'm, I'm really happy with this purchase. I think it's a really good vehicle. And he says, it's amazing. He says, it just pulls so well along the sand. It's as though that boat's not even on the back of the trailer. It's as though you've got nothing behind you. It's as though you're travelling without anything behind you. And I'm thinking, yeah, it is travelling pretty good, isn't it? And we're talking along, having a good conversation, and he's saying, you know, I, I'm amazed at this car. How well is this pulling on this, along the beach? I said, great, mate, it's darn great, yeah. And I said, Bill, how's that boat going behind me? Because he asked him to have a look. So go, and he looks out in the dark, he couldn't see it, so he peers through, and he looks again, and he steps back, doesn't say a word. Then he puts his head down and looks out again. He says, uh, Brett, I don't like to tell you this, but it's not there. I said, what do you mean it's not there? It's not there. Bang the brakes on as hard as I could. Stop dead trap in the sandy beach. Tires dig in. We hop out. We walk around the sand out towards where the boat should be. And there's no boat there. Lost it. Lost it cold. Not only have I lost socks, sunglasses and keys, I lost the whole boat. Left behind. Had to double back round, drive back and get it. Some K's back. Eventually hooked it back up and loaded the back, 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 back on. But you see, a lot of people are like that with their faith. Life's going along pretty good. 
you think it's cruising along just great. And before you know it, you've dropped something. You've dropped your faith. You've left it back there. You've dropped your faith behind. And you know, the Bible tells us in Mark's Gospel, it says this. It says that Peter uh, came up to Jesus. And this is in Mark's Gospel. Peter came up to Jesus and said, uh, Jesus had just dropped the bombshell that he's going to the cross. That, that this is what's going to happen. He's going to be crucified. And he's prophesying what's going to happen. And Peter says, no way, mate. You're not going to the cross. You know, I'm going to stop you. This, this can't happen. And Jesus rebukes Peter. He says, no, Peter, this is not. The will of God is to, for me to go to the cross. It's to suffer on the cross for the sins of the world. And he says, Peter, you've got it all wrong. And Peter said, no, no, Jesus, you can't go that way. Like, I'm not going to let you. And he's saying, Peter, you've got the things of man in mind, not the things of God. And then he goes on to teach us about what is required of us as disciples. And he says this. After this, after he spoke to Peter, he went and then grabbed the disciples and the bigger crowd out around them. He grabbed them all together and brought them into the inner circle. And he said this. If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me and the gospel will save it. What good is it for a man to gain the whole world yet forfeit his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his Father's glory with all the holy angels. Get this picture. Jesus is laying it down. If you're going to follow him, you've got to take up the cross just like Jesus. You've got to take up your faith. You've got to carry your faith. Uh, the Catholics have often said they had a cross to bear. Everyone's got a cross to bear. And that's true. Every Christian that takes that follows Jesus, must pick up a cross of some description. And that cross is ultimately to serve God and to serve mankind. And we take up that cross in, in faith. And when I was travelling up the beach and I lost my boat, I left it behind, life was all so easy. It was so easy to pull the car up the beach. It was so easy to drive. And that's how a lot of people are these days. They've let go of their faith because they're looking for the easy road. They don't want to carry faith. It's too heavy. It's too hard to carry that cross. They don't want to carry the faith because they're looking for an easy road. But the truth is, you're carrying your lifeboat behind you. If you don't have that boat, then you won't get yourself out of the situation. The cross is the lifeboat, so to speak. And you'll need it to cross over to the other side. Without that cross, you're not going to get there. Without the blood of Jesus on the cross, you're not going to enter heaven. It's not going to happen. It's by grace that you get there, not by your own works. But sometimes we let it drip. We let it fall off the back of the boat. We let it disappear. Now, it's not just one of us. We've got to turn it around, turn the family wagon around, so to speak, and go get it. So it's not just you personally that you're leaving your faith behind, but you're leaving the kids' faith behind as well. If you don't take your faith up, you're hurting your children. Faith is an incredible, important part of pleasing God. And if you just let it drop off the back and don't turn around and pick it up, turn the family wagon around and pick it up, well then you're letting it go. Do you know, that's what grace is, you know. The grace is that if you drop your bundle or drop your boat or drop the cross, you can always turn back around and pick it up again and continue your journey. That's what the grace of God is about. That there's no condemnation. If you drop it, just turn back round and pick it up. Pick, it, pick the cross back up and come and continue your journey. For without that, you're lost. So your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to turn the family wagon round. To recognise, oh, we left faith slip off the back of the boat. It's just disappeared, it's slipped behind. And you just got to say, okay, 
I can turn it around. I'm turning it around for myself, for my kids, and for my wife, and my extended family. It's not just an individual thing. You're turning it around for everybody. So you turn the family ragging around and say, you know what? We're going to get back involved in church again. We're going to get back involved in serving the poor and looking after people. We're going to start living out our faith again. And stop just living for ourselves. And that's what the gospel is, about carrying your cross. So, today, choose what you'll do. Will you turn around and pick your faith back up again? Or will you just continue on your journey and not worry about it? I thank you for watching Raising Graceful Children. And uh, thank you for being with us.